Okay, so what is the physical hardware? Let's just make it a very simple, very plain. Um, so let's say one or two sunny islands. Let's say you've got an energy meter. Let's say you've got a sunny boy. Okay, this is not designed. This is just the first starting block. So you'll have to figure out whether this will work with you or not with you. So. We're just going with the hardware side of something like Home Assistant. So Home Assistant is really nothing more, nothing less than a server to run your smart home. Okay, so what you're going to need is Home Assistant, the software. Software is free, downloadable. Okay, so nothing much there. What you do need, and you can look through the installation. So you can go down the route of Raspberry Pi, Odroid, um, generic... Um, x86 to 64 bit, okay. Uh, Windows as a virtual machine, Mac OS as a virtual machine, Linux as a virtual machine, or some really exotic uh, NAS drive type installation. Okay, so let's just keep it really simple. We'll go for straightforward, cheap Raspberry Pi. Okay, so you get your Raspberry Pi, have a look, it'll tell you what you need, flash a SD card, and whack it into your machine in your Raspberry Pi, it's all fairly, fairly simple and it will just only run Home Assistant, okay? There's there's loads and loads of stuff out there for what it is and so what I use is a Raspberry Pi Model 3B Plus, if I remember rightly, um, which at the moment they're out of stock, um, but usually the, the mm, 40, 30, 40, 50 pounds, somewhere around about there, I wouldn't go any lower and make sure that you get the 64-bit versions. Um, so you can run a Raspberry Pi 4, that will work just fine. Um, okay, so you've got that, you've got your SD card, you whack it into your machine, make sure that with the Raspberry Pi you buy a genuine power supply unit for it because they like their USB power to be a really good, solid, state okay um, now that will be powerful enough to run most of your integration um, it's only when you get into running tens of thousands of different sensors and entities and stuff it will really slow and bog down now if that is the case or the opposite way you, you want to try this you just want to see what it's like okay well you could um, either do a Windows or a Mac and do it as a virtual machine uh, cost is very cheap if you've already got a computer running or if you have an old laptop or something like that especially if you're going off grid um, then you can just wipe everything and run home assistance only on there as a server standalone but using an old laptop that you no longer need um, I say old it has to be relatively not not ancient just old okay so most laptops will, will run this without issues, but you know, if you're having problems, have a look around at things like Intel Nuts and stuff like that. Uh, there's no point, you know, uh, doing all of this off grid and then you're really worried about how many watts, and then you've got your honking great big computer parked in the corner consuming half a kilowatt. Okay, so these are the other things, it's hence the reason why you want. Ideally, you want to run something like a Raspberry Pi because it uses such little amount of energy. Um, but the same with the Intel nuts and things like that. But it gives you the idea. Okay, so you've got your Raspberry Pi, you've got now your home assistant, you flashed it to an SD card, you stuffed it in, and you're up and running. Then after that, what do you what what other things? Well, you have your SMA meter, you have your home assistant. Go down and download from integrations. Go to add on and add. So you'll then end up booting up into a screen, which was your home assistant, yeah, which is your server running. And you just won't have it populated like any of this. You only configurations. And then you go to your add-on store, eventually once mine is finished loading. And you go and download the integration for SMA. Okay, so where are we? Okay, and then you go and download your SMA. Okay, and then uh, you leave it to auto discover and it will discover these and then it'll ask you what entities you want to and then you can start building it from there. Okay, so remember as I said, you have this ESP home. So win, minus, win, long, whatever you want to put on there. So 
that is literally one of these little boards and as you can see the price is not really that much uh, you're talking like 14 15 pounds and things like that i mean they go all the way down to £2.64 again this is uh, when you, as you become a little bit more um, au fait with using the ESP software through Home Assistant then you can start to do things like that and program it inside Home Assistant so if you then want to monitor very heavy loads and things like that or even your own grid consumption but you know you don't have SMA equipment you can use this and then monitor how much uh, energy you buy, how much you export, and all the rest of it, or even inverters that, that aren't, um, they don't communicate with Home Assistant. You, you could always put these in and it will monitor the same thing on your AC grid. Um, so what you can do is you link one of these little boards, okay, and this is really a communication, this is Wi-Fi effectively, it takes data and then sends it through to your network to Home Assistant. That's basically all it does. So whatever the data is. Uh, if you want to monitor the energy on the AC side, you go and look up PeaceFair. So PeaceFair do lots of different ones now. These ones which are kind of green, they will monitor um, AC power. So volts, amps, watts, uh, um, usage per day. I'm trying to think of anything else. I think that's pretty much about it. So this will then directly plug into your ESP2866 and then the ESP2866 will then speak with Home Assistant. Okay, and then that, that's pretty much it. But if you've got all SMA equipment and if let's just say they're all on network, that's the easiest route and you can build um, your own Home Assistant very, very quickly. Um, depends how, how good you are, but as I said before, don't get too scared off. It just takes time is the main thing. And so long you're willing to spend time, you can end up with, with something that is um, far better than anything else that's on the market. And you can do it, you can get there. Um, I think it's just a lot of people instantly get put off because the amount of work required or the time required, but you can do it and it will grow with you. So, you know, if you get to the point like us and, and you have huge quantities of data now crunching and entities and all the rest of it, yeah, get yourself an Intel NUC. Um, we use a very, very old um, Acer Aspire Revo. Um, and that's literally because we just had it hanging around. It was low wattage. We don't use it for anything else. It's not powerful enough for anything else. Um, and, and we load it on, it has a huge data capacity storage, um, relatively, because it's like, I think we've got like 130, 140 gigabyte hard drive. We're only writing about 200 megabytes of data per day um, after slimming it down. So for us, it is, it is good enough. Um, the response speed is not fast. It would be much better if we had something a lot more up to date but for us and it's old tech um, it's kind of like that retro tech kind of feel rather than throwing something else in a landfill um, let's use it uh, is it usable can we use it rather than just committing it to waste um, in this case yeah absolutely I would say probably the running speed is running slower than the Raspberry Pi um, but it does absolutely work it, it does what we needed to um, so just have a little bit of a think. If it looks like you want to add loads of smart switches, if it looks like you want to add loads of different pieces of equipment and really interrogate the hell out of your network, then you might want to start from something like an Intel NUC and then you have lots of space to grow into. Um, if not, you've only got a few things you want to monitor, and I'll say a few, 10, 20 items, then go down the route and use a Raspberry Pi will be fine.